Welcome to the presentation in the Bode Electrons Festival of Christina Viola Orbeek. I'm recording this in Amsterdam in the Netherlands where I live. I had the pleasure of taking part in the Bode Electrons Festival 2019 in Cape Town. I presented my work Keychain 3 for piano, toy piano and fixed media performed by pianist Lisa Joubert. Lisa and I also gave a presentation in the festival. Making this presentation video and the concert video has been a real adventure for me. I've had to learn a lot of new things. For my pieces Streamlines 1 and Chromatoy 3, I tried my hand at what I call experimental imagery or colorations on a few images. The presentation is arranged in three sections describing compositions of mine using some form of electronics. They span about 16 years. The first section is the Chromatoy series, with pieces for combinations of piano, toy piano, acoustic piano. Also, there is a solo for Yamaha disc clavier in that series. The second section is stolen goods for percussion duo and samples of the South African Cape Weaver Bird. The third section is Streamlines 1 for violin and electronics. I described the piece as originally written in 2011 and the remix I've made in 2021. And this remix I see as a work in progress. I hope you find something of interest in this presentation. Thank you. The Chromatoy series. Chromatoy evokes for me the many colored sounds to be made with the 12 chromatic tones of traditional keyboard instruments. Primary colors, pastel colors, Blendings of all kinds are associations of mine with sound and color. It also references the toy piano, which I happened upon and was charmed by and started to make music for around 2005. Chromatoy 1 and 3 are for combinations of toy pianos and grand piano. Chromatoy 2 is a solo for Yamaha disc clavier. I changed the order as I made new versions, sometimes for different performers, sometimes for different kinds of media. Chromatoy 1, three sketches for Schoenhut toy grand piano, toy piano, tines, sound wheel, and live electronics, was first performed at the Rainy Days Festival in Luxembourg in 2012, performed by composer and pianist Phyllis Chen, with live electronics performed by the composer. Here you see some wonderful old Schoenhut toy pianos. Phyllis Chen had a far more modern version. Here's the score of the first version of Chromatoy 1, performance notes about the live electronics and the effects programmed in Max MSP, and uh, the playing implements for sound wheel and toy piano tines, which I've spoken about. Um, you can see here the wine box with the piano tines mounted upon it, and that is played with different playing implements, with fingers, with um, wooden uh, sticks. And the sound wheel is a unicycle without pedals, mounted upside down, and amplified by one or two condenser mics. And you see next to the standing unicycle, the wheel itself with various playing implements, which I developed or just bought toys. And you turn the wheel with one hand and hold the implement against it with another. And this is all notated pretty accurately in the score. There are the tines again, close up, close up, the sound wheel, a flyer about the Toy Piano World Summit, which was embedded in the Big John Cage extravaganza that was in the Rainy Days Festival in Luxembourg 2012. And here is Phyllis Chen playing a, a fragment of that performance.
the recording of Phyllis had been more clear. It's, it's very overexposed. Sorry about that. Here's uh, the score of Chromatoy 1. Actually, this is the revision. Uh, you see 2012, 2016. And um, it's telling about the preset object in, in Max. And I was telling you about that. The preset object, in this case, had 42 different presets. And by pressing on the foot pedal, one would proceed to the next number. And each of these had, as I said, different electronic effects, um, plugins, uh, also audio. Um, and they're all notated in the score, as you see. Of course, this is the second part, because this version started with the second part. Uh, you said 12, 13. Each one of those is a number of one of the presets. And one could go forward and backwards on that uh, foot pedal if a mistake had been made. But it worked pretty well. Um, this is the third part of Chromatoy version 2. Um, a lot of glissandi being played on the metal kinds. Um, also on the sound wheel with various uh, effects, various implements, the chopstick fan, as I called it, a paper fan, which I made, and all kinds of motives played on the tines with teasters, little glass um, sticks. And here we see the third movement of version two of Chromatoy, one, three sketches. You see Glissandi on the metal tines being played with various implements, uh, toy piano notes, the sound wheel, spin the wheel first and then place, for in, the, in this example, the chopsticks fan, number of chopsticks glued together, the paper fan. And so it goes on to the end. And the end of the piece is uh, got a lot of the Glissandi, um, and at the very end, uh, the performers asked to improvise with earlier material playing the toy piano tines. And here is Anne Feinberg, portion of Gromatoy 1, version 3. Takes a few seconds for it to render. Chromatoid 2 for partially prepared Yamaha disc clavier and live electronics. For this work, I used two laptops, one for Lisa Stein's live sampling program for sampling and playback of the MIDI played on the disc clavier triggered from Logic Pro from the second laptop. There's a section at the end for improvisation on the disc clavier with my felt box. I performed Chromatoid 2 a number of times myself in the Netherlands 
first in the Gaudiamus Day of the Disclavier, and at the World Music Days in Hong Kong, 2007. Here's a legend of all of the assignments on the MIDI keyboard for the two laptops, and whether they are signaling only an audio file, or a Lisa record file, or a Lisa playback file, or triggering notes from Logic Audio to be played on the disc clavier. In this piece, I wanted to be able to produce a series of piano harmonics by placing large felt blocks on the strings behind the piano dampers. As I said before, I used this Oxygen MIDI keyboard to either trigger Logic play zones, Logic notes which would be sent to the disc clavier, and, uh, and or um, recording zones in Lisa, the live sampling program from Stime, and the rotaries I was using as uh, triggering play zones, and I could turn them on and off, shorter or longer, and or with effects. Here's the first page of the score. It's starting out with the harmonics played on very deep bass notes, and when you hold the felt bar behind the dampers, you get the fourth harmonic. This is going on in the same fashion and type of technique. Now I'm skipping ahead to the third region, in which are very fast motives, very fast notes, running up and down the keyboard, and I'm going to let you hear a fragment of that portion. Now we've come to Logic Region 4. It's kind of a ritualistic texture uh, sound, of very low bass notes, and a very high bell-like or gong-like uh, sounds. And here's also a fragment from Chromatoid 2. The last part of the piece is a long descending series of uh, notes from the harmonic series and ending in the bass, at which time uh, the composer takes the felt block and does an improvisation on the bass notes. And in this case, I put them at different places. And so they're like nodes. I'm playing harmonics on a, on a violin, for example. Here's a portion.
Chromatore Three is the first concert piece in my concert before this presentation. Chromatore Three is for toy grand piano, mini toy piano, acoustic grand piano, and live electronics. And it was first played at the Gaudiamus Live Festival at the Musikgebouw aan het I in Amsterdam by the wonderful pianist Tomoko Mukayama. The composer did the live electronics. Chromatoy 3 was conceived as an ensemble piece of keyboards, acoustic and live sampled. The acoustic toy piano with 37 keys and the MIDI toy piano with 25 keys were placed next to each other so that the performer had a widened toy piano of 62 pitches. The MIDI toy piano was actually an Oxygen 8 MIDI keyboard, which you can see in the middle of this image, installed in the shell of a toy piano left in the left upper corner, uh, which happen to have exactly the same width and amount of notes as the oxygen felicitous occurrence. And then you see it was built into the shell, the, the uh, toy tines were, were taken out. And this was done by Dave Kroshoff at his time residency I was doing. The MIDI toy piano had two modes. Uh, one of the two modes were the sampled notes of the acoustic toy piano, but transposed to extend the 37-note range of the acoustic Schoenhut grand piano, 25 notes lower. And the second was what I call PF harm, um, uh, notes played in the bass using the harmonic felt block. You can see uh, Tomoko and she's got two toy pianos next to each other, and she walks back and forth between the two toy pianos and the grand piano in the second and third pieces. I'm not going to play you any audio from this piece because it is on, in its entirety on the concert video. It's the first piece on that. Here's some of the score. Describing the setup and the software. And here's the first movement. A lot of very fast notes, a lot of uh, uh, tremoli, uh, a lot of circling motives, and played on both pianos. Um, and at the end, for example, of the first series, you can see they're moving all the way up the two keyboards, which is something interesting because you don't have this opportunity on a usual toy piano to have so many notes. And the second movement is called Feldman-esque, and this is contrasted by the gradual appearance of what I call a sound mobile, which is a, a humble homage to the master Morton Feldman. Eleven different Motives are played and sampled sequentially on toy pianos or the acoustic grand, and as they're played, they're recorded and played back, sometimes with other effects, but mostly pretty played back pretty straight. And they build up to a very layered, what I hope is a, a sort of turning sound mobile. Fields move. is a long descent of piano shrills on the acoustic grand, mirrored and transformed as a duet between pianist and live electronics player. Each new trill motive is recorded in Lisa and played milliseconds later with electronic effects. And since I was playing this myself, I didn't notate all the playback zones. So you see what I recorded, MIDI note one, record one, two, MIDI note two, record two. A mini note three, in other words, that's one of the notes on the oxygen. And the playback zone, which was on, obviously on another 
uh, note on the oxygen keyboard was a playback zone, but I was uh, free to do that as I wished, time-wise. So it's just gradually descending from very high all the way into the bass and all the way down to the a very low F on, in the bass and then <clears throat> there are some long long notes and chords with various effects and then we have the Listian sample which is pretty tongue-in-cheek but I enjoyed putting it in there to show that it's still very much a piano and um, goes towards the end with some clusters being live sampled. The second part of my presentation is about stolen goods for percussion duo Bart de Freys and Ruth Rulofsen. It was first performed in June 2019 in the venue Splendor in Amsterdam and the Netherlands. From my program note, an acoustic environment of loops and accents on a palette of percussion instruments conjures up a deceivingly calm landscape of rhythms in which the deconstructed mating call of the South African Cape weaver bird is introduced. This material is largely derived from the call itself, but freely interpreted in the piece. The mating call is gradually reconstructed into the complete and incredible call and song of the Cape weaver bird to entice a partner to share its brilliantly woven nest of grasses. Because for those who don't know about his abilities, the male weaver bird weaves a nest hanging from a tree branch, sometimes in one day, and then calls to prospective mates to come and rate the rest nest and decide to form a relationship for mating. The visiting females don't all approve, and it has even been observed that the weaver male may destroy the nest if there is no taker and start a new one. These photos I'm showing are from Derek Keats, a wonderful photographer who kindly gave me permission to use his images of the weaver bird. Sitting on a terrace with a drink near Clan William in the Western Cape in South Africa, I heard the call of the Cape weaver bird for the first time. The form of the descending melody and its pitches and textures blew my mind. I hadn't yet seen the bird, but I was amazed that it could produce such a deep bass notes and found the rhythms of its call extremely like rapping rhythms. I kept listening and decided that this would have to be the subject of a new collaboration with percussion duo Bart de Freys and Ruth Rulofsen. Here we see the weaver bird in the process of weaving the nest with his claws and beak. Pretty amazing. I decided to uh, compose with making cells small bits of the weaver's call, uh, building blocks as I heard them. And a few other sounds were used, group communications in buzzes, knetters chattering. Here you see the weaver bird uh, calling from his nest, hanging from his nest. Uh, it's pretty amazing that this small animal could make that fantastic object. Uh, after choosing the sounds and composing with them as instruments, so as I said, I divided the uh, my transcription into motives. Uh, here you see the very proximate pitch transcription and rhythmic transcription that I made and I divided that into three motives, not entirely. And later on, I, I chopped them into smaller bits for use in the composing process. After choosing the sounds and composing with them as instruments, I uh, named and assigned them to MIDI notes to be triggered in, in this case, Ableton Live on MIDI keyboards. Uh, this video I'm going to show you was for a funding app um, which demonstrates how I would use the bird's call by assigning the rhythms to garage band samples in Logic.
That was fun to make, pretty tongue-in-cheek. Here's the information page of the score in which you see the um, extra instruments I used, uh, aside from the snare drum and um, a concert tom, and which instruments each player uh, works with. Each player plays a snare drum, but each have their own implements and specific colors. Uh, player one uses sticks, rubber, and soft mallets, and a snare stick with a doorstopper coil, which was inspired by percussionist, composer, and educator Jean Koshinsky. Player two uses the snare drum laid on a soft cloth with the snares on top and plays them with fingers, brushes, and woolen mallets for shell and rim. Then player one plays two percussion uh, brake wheels with a thin metal, metal stick. And player two plays the wooden wine box with fingers and decorative wooden strips and a concert tom without the head. And here's a list of uh, a legend for playing the motives of the doorstop coil, which I, which for which I worked with Arud Rulofsson, and a list of the names I assigned to the samples used. There were 15, uh, 16, well, I guess I didn't have one for that. Um, and here, how I loaded them very simply into Ableton Live, and each player has his own keyboard, uh, MIDI keyboard, and his own numbers in the score of which samples to play. They never play the same sample at the same time. Here's the first page of the score. Um, Except for a few interspersed samples of short Cape Weaver sounds, connectors and buzzes, uh, the call is used in sequential fragments, sometimes combined and more and more shared by the two players, until the enticements of the Cape Weaver bird's call is sounded a few minutes before the end in measure nine. I call the first panel the environment. Uh, Ritmo Mechanico, septuplet traded off. Um, between the two players. That's followed by, by Misturioso, a contrasting small panel of a one-hand roll with soft mallets on the snares. In Agitato, you can see the first real use of the actual Cape Wheeler bird samples, of course cut in, in smaller fragments. And we get a Mysterioso repeat of panel two, pretty literally a repeat. And uh, in Ritmo Mechanico, it's a, a repeat of actually uh, the first panel, but now interspersed with more and more um, MIDI notes of the Weaver Bird. Nervoso introduces some new sounds and instruments. Uh, for player one, the doorstop coil, and player two complementing it with the repeated weaver bird motive, and then player two introduces the uh, glued together gift wine box, um, which he plays uh, with a decorative piece of wooden molding, um, a wooden stick, um, and, and so forth. Then we're building up to uh, the first and three times repeated uh, f weaver bird call in its entirety. Um, and the uh, break drum sounds are introduced in this last part of uh, Molto Agitato.
And then we come back to Tempo Primo, which is, in fact, the first panel, Ritmo Meccanico, but now almost every note is played on the MIDI keyboards of the Cape Weaver bird. The piece ends with a sort of collage in the Misterioso Calmo, all of the different instruments presented, uh, as I said, in a kind of collage form. And that's the end of this second part of the presentation. So this is the third part of my presentation. While sketching the history of this piece, I'm using as a backdrop a collage I made and have added to through the years of images, paintings, patterns, architectures, which have been of great inspiration to me. Streamlines One for violin solo and fixed media was composed for violinist Yolantia de Vries in 2011 for a portrait concert around my work which had the name Streamlines. This was held in the Van Abbe Museum in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Streamline is a pretty intuitively composed piece in which I was experimenting with extended techniques and sounds of the violin and how I could use those in the fixed media. Working with Yolanda de Vries in 2011 on the original version during his residency at Stein was very exciting experimenting with various textures and colors together. When the score was settled, I recorded her playing the piece, and from that I derived the fixed media using Logic Pro and various plugins. This is the information page of the original piece, but first I'd like to read from my first program note. Through imaginary lines, stream data, electricity, fantasies, regrets, hopes, memories, physical and virtual. The violin is heard in a conversation, an orchestration with and of itself, sometimes against fields of long, vibrating, noisy lines, sometimes as ascending or descending microtonal glissandi, sometimes in repeated patterns of circling melodic motors traded off with sharply bouncing ricochets. Here you see some fairly straightforward uh, suggestions for the uh, uh, for the sound, for the audio. Um, I originally had made a, a junction patch with the help of Stein, programmed to control a foot pedal, um, and the foot pedal would trigger uh, time markers and logic audio of the pre-recorded segments. But in the end, uh, Yolanda found it easier and more intuitive to memorize the whole piece, the notes, and the fixed media. The performer's notes, performance notes, show uh, a few of the techniques that I was experimenting with at that time. Bow wipes, bow wiping, uh, alternating the bow position as fast as possible between the bridge and the fingerboard, chops hitting the strings percussively with a down bow. There are not so many mentioned, but I used more, and it was kind of a beginning of my search for extended techniques. Here's the first page, and this is the first part, um, vortices. The definition of vortices is a mass of fluid, like a liquid, with a whirling or circular motion that tends to form a cavity or vacuum in the center of the circle and to draw bodies towards this vacuum or cavity. I thought circling upwards, circling downwards, making use of the bow wiping, which I had been very inspired by in work by Chiarino. And this was alternated with sections of arpeggio-like chords very freely played by Yolanda. You can see here are tremoli uh, uh, descending and ascending um, and then at the bottom of the page Menomoso, the arpeggios which are written as exact arpeggios, but in fact were played more <coughs> as long broken chords. I'm going to uh, let you hear the audio of the first performance of this piece in Eindhoven, and this is Yolanda de Vries.
Now jump to 2021, because these last two movements, Serpentines and Riffles, were what I used as the basis for my remix. I thought to use the whole recording as one track, in one track. And um, so the violin and fixed media were what I made fixed media track for. I had never done anything like this, and it felt a bit daring, but I thought, what the heck. Well, the new fixed media track, track two, alternates between miming the violin and the original fixed media, so stretching its acoustics to distortions and transformations, which I found fascinating to experiment with. In the remix, I've used similar plugins as in the original recording, which is now being commented upon as one track as if it were the original song. So in a way the um, the remix is kind of uh, a common three times removed from the original. At the end I made some additions in what turned out to be kind of a, a remix solo for the fixed media looping uh, for a while and then the um, the end. Again, I hope you find something of interest in my presentation in the Bode Electrons Festival 2021. Please get in touch with any questions, queries, fragies you might have about my work. I'm including the addresses of my website, YouTube channel, and the address of the Conlon Foundation if you're interested to read and hear more about it. Christina. Christina, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for investing time and, and effort in uh, presenting, presenting us with your world, uh, your, your creative world. It's, it's, it's really very, very moving. Um, if you have a look at the chat, you'll see that 
Miles has posted a question. Um, perhaps I'll just quickly go through the question post, post, posted by Miles. Correct me if I'm wrong, he says. In these works, mostly from 10 years to a few years ago or so, were you only utilizing triggers that were based on one-to-one -one processes, i.e. not reliant on direct feedback from the musician? And if so, has your work begun to incorporate more procedural processing, i.e reliant on direct feedback from the live musician, whether haptic or non-haptic, as technologies have evolved. Ah, yes, I am. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, I had written an answer. Um, actually, the, the first piece on the concert video, Chromatoy uh, 3 with the two toy pianos, um, I was uh, using Lisa live sampling. So I was yeah. directly live sampling and playing back with effects or not with effects, um, what the pianist was, was playing. She was, she was only playing the score, simply right. the notes of the score. Uh, and then in yeah, <laughs> uh, back to Chromatoid 1, uh, the mm -hmm. fragment with Phyllis Chen, um, I was using Max for the first time and that was same, same thing, live sampling, mm -hmm. playback with effects. And then let's see what the now stolen good is clear. That's just MIDI triggering of the little samples. Uh, and then with the Elantia was also, that was the first time I actually made a fixed media uh, track, um, which I wanted her to trigger uh, with cues in the score, but which as I mentioned, she decided to learn from memory. It was all very new for her. Uh, and so she played it with the, fixed media in her uh, ears. Yeah, yeah. So in, in a way, I've gone more towards fixed media to have more control. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Maybe go back again to the other. If, if I understand that that is the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Miles, please feel free to post um, an update or a, a response. And to bring in a, mis, uh, a, a, a misused term, minimalism, um, any 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 influence from minimalist thought or processes in your work? Not so directly. I mean, I, I certainly remember um, the Philip Glass and uh, and uh, Steve Reichel being influenced um, by African drumming. I think um, in West Africa they went and studied with with masters. So I was well, particularly Steve Reich, I like very much, but I didn't really. I didn't really try my hand at saying, I'm gonna make a minimalist piece. There's a lot of repetition in my work just because I like that in, I don't know, I just like it. <laughs> I don't see any further questions in the chat line or in the chat. So with that in mind, it is wonderful that you were back, uh, that you came back this year. And I do hope that um, we hear some live music um, at Bird Electrons 2022. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you very much. I look forward to that. Bye. Bye. Ciao.